In our two previous shader toy videos, we went over how to add new generators in Autograph using GLSL programming language. Some shaders use the ray marching technique to create incredible landscapes with just code, like the artist Shane does here. Ray marching lets you generate any shape based on mathematical formulas. However, you can also use external textures to define the appearance of these shapes. By replacing this texture with a different one used to define the terrain's elevation based on luminance, we can vary the surface details and the ridges of this mountain landscape. If we look through Shader Toy's texture library, we can see surface changes by swapping these textures. Shader Toy has four input channels called eye channels that can reference external textures. Here, the base color is defined by the code, and eye channel 1 is used to define an additional surface color. By changing its content, we can directly see its influence on the surface. Just like in our previous video, we'll select the entire code in Shader Toy, copy the text, and then go back into Autograph. We'll click on the Quick Access to Generator button and paste the code into the editing window. An error message appears indicating that we don't have the two images used by the two eye channel inputs. Here we can see the same four eye channel inputs, like in Shader Toy, but the image content from Shader Toy isn't provided in Autograph. So we need to connect graphic sources to these inputs. We need to provide graphic sources for eye channel 0 and eye channel 1 just like in Shader Toy. It's entirely possible to connect external images or even compositions, but here we'll use procedural generators, which have the advantage of being infinite in size in Autograph. We'll start by connecting a noise generator to the iChannel 0 slot, and continue by adding a grid generator to the iChannel 1 slot. Now the shader is visible since it's able to use the sources connected to the iChannel 0 and iChannel 1 slots, and we can play around with the generator parameters. For example, we can increase or reduce the number of cells and control the gap between each cell. This interaction happens in real time. Similarly, we can go back to the noise connected to the iChannel 0 slot and make adjustments to control how the terrain elevation is calculated in this landscape. To visualize this noise at the same time, we'll create a second viewer and place it next to the first one, and we'll give them a bit more space by moving the project panel. To keep the render from the shader toy generator, we'll start by locking the first viewer. Then we can go back to the generator parameters and double click on the noise to display it in solo mode in the second viewer. This way we can preview the noise that'll be used to generate the movement of the mountain terrain in the left viewer, and see the result when it's used in the shader on the right. Let's start by changing this type of noise to Voro noise. Noise parameter modifications are interactive as they're directly reflected in the shader. We can also adjust the contrast to control the elevation, change the Voronoise V parameter to blur the cells, or adjust the Voronoise U parameter to change their shape. It's important to note that the goal here isn't to directly copy and paste the code from Shader Toy. It's important to both respect the work of artist coders and adapt this technology for your own needs. Just like in our previous video, the purpose here is to show that we can use shader coding, specifically ray marching, while combining it with any external graphic source whether it's generators, compositions, simple images, or animations. For example, we can add details to the ground by simply increasing the octaves value. Our team at Left Angle aims to leverage the extraordinary work done by digital artists using programming by bringing these two worlds together. By making it easier to include their work in production, we can create a wide variety of new styles and effects.